for society? Well, society funds science in quite a big way. And the reason we get a lot more is because society wants something back out of it. You know, they want to have a better quality of life. They want to um, uh, live longer. They want um, uh, to have diseases cured. And the only way you're going to do that is through science. Ultimately, the knowledge that you need to do all of those things relies on science. So that's why society funds it. I think it needs understanding from society that science is important, understanding that you cannot manage science top down, um, that it looks a bit anarchistic. I'm arguing that you give freedom to individuals to, uh, to follow where their noses go, and society's got to be tolerant of that if they want an efficient and effective system. If society gets too top-down and directive, they will only attract mediocre people to work in science and they won't get the creative solutions to the problems they seek. So we've had a great year of physics research and uh, we've also had a great year of molecular biology. It's, it's ongoing. And, uh, but what, what is coming next? What is, what is the next direction for science? I think, um, for me, it's putting together, actually, molecular biology together with the thinking that comes from the physical sciences to get a better understanding of what life is and how it works. And my own view, I'm a cell biologist, is that the focus that's going to yield first is understanding how the cell, the simplest unit of life, is going to work. And I see that's going to be shown by a combination of sophisticated molecular and cellular biology, combining it with the thinking and techniques that will come from the bioinformatics, from physics, from chemistry, from maths. And we're going to see a much more multidisciplinary approach to those problems. So when a young scientist comes to you and asks the question, you know, where should I, what, what should I study, what, what, is, what is the best direction to go? My answer is you study what is interesting you. Okay. You drive it. It's your, you've got to be enthusiastic about it. Don't listen to me. I'm past it. Listen to yourself. Well, I think if you're going to do research science, you've got to be a complete enthusiast. You've got to have a, a burning desire to want to know the answers. Because if you're only half-hearted, um, it's such a long grind, you're not going to get through that, you know? And you've also got to get satisfaction from small things, you know, doing a good experiment. You know, the humble artistry of doing the experiment. Because you're not ever going to get these big discoveries occurring sufficiently frequently to keep you motivated. That's only going to happen rarely. Yeah.